Okay, uh, welcome tonight. We're, the selectmen are having a workshop with the planning board and uh, we're going to discuss uh, the rezoning of, of the uh, downtown district to hopefully get some revenue for the town to take some burden off the taxpayers. So, um, if whoever's going to open for the I'll, planning board, I'll open for the planning board. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, yeah, we've been working on this for a while now, and what we're trying to do is just make it look a little more attractive for businesses to come into town. As it's set up now with our special permit process, <coughs> I'll tell you what happens is, it, just for instance, we'll say a Dunkin' Donuts wants to come along 122 somewhere here, mm -hmm. and they want to do it in Millville. Well, they'll come to the planning board, zoning, wherever, and they'll see it's a special permit. They won't even stop. They'll keep right on going to Oxbridge or go down to Blackstone. They don't like dealing with special permits. No business does. And we're kind of heavy with special permits in the zoning. And we're just trying to make it a little easier, even for small businesses, home businesses, uh, to come in and work. It's just, it's tough for them. Okay. So we just make, we're looking to make it a little easier, maybe help the tax burden in both. So, uh, I'll switch it over to Joe. Joe's a planner. He's been working hard on this with us and he's got quite a bit of information on it. Okay. Joe? Um, I'm just going to stand because I first want to uh, draw my attention to this now. Um, hopefully, Ken will be able to, to grab this as well. Um, as John said, the planning board has been thinking uh, about and, and also hearing comments on how uh, we can try to bring more business into town. We've actually had a couple of applicants who have come in front of the board, gone through the special permit process, and said that we should be more similar to other towns um, and allow things as of right uh, with some level of control. Uh, and what the, t what the board started doing, and, and myself started doing, was sort of, this is just a, a sketch showing the town, um, the color, Lots are town and parcels, but we we're trying to just come up with an approach as far as where we want to direct some development. Um, this isn't a new idea. Back in '96, the town had uh, gone through a master plan process. It identified the principal areas for higher density, being the village center, with more uh, lesser density area uh, development occurring as you head away from the village center. Uh, However, from 96 to now 2014, um, there hasn't really been a significant amount of growth that has challenged that approach for the town. In fact, um, our review of the master plan from 96, really a lot of the recommendations still were valid. And as we were going through, we're trying to update the master plan to bring it up to uh, uh, 2014 numbers. We sort of realized there's some initiatives that were called for back then that we should really bring in advance of uh, bringing forward a more complete master plan. And that really identified allowing for some commercial development on Lincoln Street and then, uh, I mean, sorry, on, uh, on Main Street, on both ends, more in the village center with Main Street and Central uh, so that we can preserve more of the outlying land. Uh, if some of you may recall attending town meeting a couple years ago, we came forward with uh, an article for allowing renewable energy on two town parcels. One right here and one over here um, on the land. As part of that process, we actually adopted a site plan review bylaw as well. The site plan review bylaw was required by the state for the Green Communities uh, Program for renewable energy uh, facilities to go through, they called it expedited, but it's still 180 days. You're still dealing with a lengthy process. But the important thing was that it was called site plan review, not special permit, because the use was allowed, provided the town could go through uh, a review of the site plan on, on how that project would appear on the lot, go through drainage, look at uh, the amount of land cleared, look at access, look at safety. Um, that site plan bylaw, which, uh, which the board created and town meeting adopted, is really one of the pieces that, as we discuss this rezoning effort, is already established because it means it's just one less bylaw we have to approve. approve. But also, when we say use is 
allowed by site plan um, rather than special permit, it means we've already established a process to evaluate these types of applications to give neighbors and abutters uh, some level of uh, place at the table to make sure that their voice on how development may impact them can be heard and considered by the planning board while giving applicants some certainty as far as what can be expected of the process. So just to sort of go through, um, what you have here is a handout that basically just has bullet items for what the board is trying to do, uh, and then also a, a proposed map on the back. And you'll see that this basically mirrors what we had discussed um, basically six, seven months ago uh, as a board. What's proposed is a village center business district where higher density mixed use development would be encouraged within the center part of the, the town, off to the sides along Main Street, and then uh, down closer to the Rhode Island line would be a highway business district, roadside business district that would have more traditional commercial development. As John said, Every single use that is not residential in town requires a special permit. Under this proposed rezoning, and then also you'll have a copy of the use table, um, you'll see a lot of the SPs have been changed to, P, uh, to P's, which means site plan approval is required. How that works is that for these districts, those uses that are identified as a P would go through the site plan review, there are specific regulations the board adopted that deal with the application submission materials, stormwater, drainage, if applicable, traffic, um, uh, health and safety, rubbish removal, landscaping, a lot of aspects that uh, the board typically deals with special permit, but what's different between both processes is that special permit has a level of, uh, of additional discretion by the board. Uh, and what that means is that someone coming in, the board can evaluate those two projects differently. For some uses, it is important to maintain that special permit uh, category. And you'll see through the proposed list, there are still some SP special permits in the uh, Village Center Business District and Highway Business. Those are the columns off on the right. Because those are uses that the board feels we need to maintain some level of uh, discretion to go beyond just looking at stormwater and landscaping plans and civil engineering plans. Um, but the, the ones that, and John identified a perfect example, retail, the board in, in its history of approving special permits for retail um, has conditioned things such as where people park, where, store, where um, trash receptacles are, how they're screened. Uh, hours of operation. These are all, all things that we can deal with in site plan review, but it gives the applicants a additional level of surety going through the process. And that's what we're trying to do is, is put ourselves on more of a common foundation when we are comparing ourselves to Menden, Oxford, Blackstone, even uh, Milford, to make sure that businesses know here's a clear, concise process we can expect through, through Millville without having an additional layer that um, from year to year project to project could be an unknown. Um, the article itself for town meeting is very simple. It's amending the use table and creation of the districts and adoption of a new map. I'm working with CMRPC, Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. They're working on a map now that will be late, late, um, based on our town's GIS. Currently, all of our maps are based off of a, uh, while it is electronic, it's not something that's um, necessarily GIS based, and it's more a holdover from previous uh, zoning maps, which were hand drawn. By moving to GIS, um, which stands for Geographic Information Systems, we have parcel data that then we can more exactly identify where this district is um, and take away a little bit of ambiguity on interpreting which districts some properties are on. We already have the site plan review process on the books, so it ends up being basically the use table and then the creation of the map. The question becomes, 
really, is this a direction that Millville wants to go? And it, it ends up being more philosophical than technical. Do we want to allow um, a different review and approval process in the center here than what's been uh, the tradition? The board undertook this not only from the master plan, but also uh, we've had CMRPC through state funds do some planning exercise in the center of town. 181 Main Street across the um, across Central Street. Uh, that's old manufacturing site. We had uh, funds that were provided through um, CMRPC and federal funds for doing an initial assessment because that's identified as a hazardous site. They looked at the development potential. Uh, one of the things they also did was evaluate our current zoning. And this was one of the recommendations that they came up with, was trying to identify a more clear permitting process. We also had gone through a visioning process for what should happen in the center of town, uh, meaning evaluating people, planning board members, other boards, and residents who attend to see what kind of development they would like to see. Would we like to see sort of things set back, uh, buildings set back, parking up front, uh, sort of more, say, Route 9 development, or would we rather have something that reinforces the village character in Melville? Uh, the overriding conclusions was that people wanted to maintain the character of Millville, but allow for some level of additional development. This effort um, is really the, a progression of that planning work that CMRPC did, but also that the town did um, back in 1996. Uh, where our intent is to come forward over the next year with a revised master plan for the board, for the town to comment and evaluate and to um, help form. But this was something that we felt was fairly specific. It was recommended in past planning studies. And that I think people could understand this a little bit more as far as um, this could have a impact on development in Millville and more importantly on the revenue, which is, is really, uh, the budget for the town is really on the shoulders of the residents and the board has made it a priority trying to look at how we can relieve that burden and to allow for a higher diversity of uses in town. Um, like I said, it's not a complex uh, proposal, it's more philosophical and the purpose of this is to basically receive some public input um, so that we can uh, take it in co into consideration as we prepare a formal article. Uh, even more specifically, this, this use table. If anyone has any thoughts on what they should be, uh, a yes meaning as of right meaning, you can just go and apply for a building permit. Uh, P meaning site plan review through the planning board, SP special permit, or no, which means it's not even permitted. If anyone has any comments on that use table, I encourage people to email the planning department, planning at millvillema.org, uh, drop, drop a hard copy, written notes um, for the, the planning board in the office, um, or grab one of the planning board members, as you see them around town, to uh, provide your comments. Our hope is in the next um, couple of weeks to finalize this so we can submit it for an article for the board selectmen to put on the fall town meeting war. So I'd like to open up for, for any questions or, or any comments people have. I, I'm, I'm totally um, in favor of, of this whole plan, so I, and I don't really have any comments or questions on it other, you know, other than uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy it's, it's gonna happen because a lot of people in, in town do need that uh, relief in their taxes and, and with inflation going the way it is and Social Security not moving, you know, it's, it's a big burden. So that's, to me, this is what makes this so important, so. I'd like to say just one thing. I know Joe touched on it, he mentioned it, but I think it's important that uh, taxpayers of Millville know that just because we're taking away the word special permit and go on a slight site plan review, doesn't mean a business can come in here and just say, you know, I want to build here and they're going to build here. It, they still have to go through a process <laughs> on the site plan review. And also, there'll be hearings 
of butters in any tax paying town can come to the meetings and voice their opinion. It's, 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 I think that's important for the people to know. They just can't, we're not just allowing people to come in and build, right. put in a business. We want business, but we want it done right. Right. No, I understand. I don't know any, anybody out have any comments, questions, concerns? I'm just wondering in my own mind. I think that all sounds good. And uh, we could certainly use a, uh, some relief from the tax burden. But how, I, I wonder in my own mind, what business is going to be attracted here when we don't have sewer or water? I mean, right. This is, I don't like to be negative, but those are the reality. Right. So this is, this is one piece of a very intricate puzzle. The first thing is basically getting your, your permitting books in line. Um, the second piece is really what we're working on uh, now is the master plan process. Because with state funds, how they sort of uh, dried up over the, over the years, um, the state and the various agencies that oversee um, like infrastructure improvements uh, have it's become so competitive that they really <coughs> want to know how a project is going to fit specifically within a govern a, a given plan. So the work is being done on renovating the master plan so we can have a document when we go to the state and say, here's why we want some assistance for Say, and I'm just pulling things out of the out of the sky here. Mm -hmm. A small package uh, treatment plant for the center to handle just the village area. Um, if we were to apply for grants and funding from the state for such infrastructure, the first thing they're asking is, how does this meet a goal of the master plan? When the only thing we have from 19 is from 1996, we don't even have a foot in the door to compete with other towns. So this is really just the first, first step, because there are some uses that can, can accommodate their need for sewer um, and water on site. There's others that, yes, the density is, is too high. Um, you can't reuse an existing parcel because it's so small that you need to have other water or wastewater options. Um, but we can't even entertain that down the road if we haven't identified as a town what we want to look, how we want to look like. And part of the things that deal with overall development, besides the state saying, what goal of the master plan is this going to be? How are you set up to allow that to happen? Meaning zoning is in place. Um, I had just worked on for a different town, a MassWorks grant. And the state, in sort of streamlining everything is having everything under one sort of uh, infrastructure grant program that not only relies on um, your master plan, but also regional plans and how you meet their goals. So part of it, part of the work of CMRPC doing the Worcester uh, regional plan is also, they're trying to focus development down into the village centers, into the highly populated areas. Um, they want to see that towns have adopted regulations and bylaws to do this. So we can then, hopefully in a year from now, once we go through a public process identifying, you know, what do we want to do and what kind of infrastructure do we want to have in town, we can start checking these things off, saying, yes, we've done this. We've adopted uh, village center zone. We've allowed for higher density. Um, we have a master plan that talks about what we want to do. Um, it's so hard now in Massachusetts to even get past go to get off of home base without having a lot of these documents in place. And this is just one component. But also, you know, I, I use the example of sewer. This um, mass work grant is also for paving of roads, installation of sidewalks. There's a lot of funding that now is um, given out by the state that they're putting into the towns that sort of have this, this vision, not only from a zoning perspective, but also from a planning perspective. So, you know, this is one piece in trying to implement sections from a, from a plan that is coming up on 20 years old, but 
it's actually all the stuff from, from that plan is still very relevant. And this recommendation was basically reinforced when CMRPC came in and did an assessment of our zoning. Um, so. I'll just, as an example for the, the question on the water and sewer um, in Mendon, all the whole imperial complex is on septic and well. Really? Yeah, the Hoods Plaza is all septic and well. Dunkin' Donuts, all that. So if that might give you an idea, McDonald's and Uxbridge is on septic. So. Yeah, if you know, there's really no limit to what you can do if you have septic or, or not. It's just how big, you know, how much of an expensive system do you need mm -hmm. to accommodate your type of business? And then the Board of Health would regulate that and engineers, you know, would, would decide on what you would have to do. So. Yeah, right. No, all the way against the wall. Yeah, I'm doing. Um, I guess what you said earlier about you kind of compared us to the uh, the other towns like Blackstone, Mendon, and Uxbridge, and even mm -hmm. Field. Is there a way we can see how we compare to the uh, to those other towns on their zoning and the stuff that we're talking about here tonight? Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible to um, uh, put for the board and put together a quick bullet list as far as here the pools that other towns have. Um, there's uh, other more in-depth analysis that can be done, but I think for uh, probably for town meeting, probably for our report, we'd be, be best to for the board and I to identify um, you know, how this lines up in, with the practices in other towns. So. Is this, I mean, I've said this a hundred times already in the past, but if you took a ride from Pawtucket where 122 starts and all the way out to Paxton, Mass, um, other than some wetland areas, Millville's about the only spot that has no business at all on 122, and we're really missing the boat. We're like the missing link in this, and we're missing a lot of revenue because of that, and because of that, a lot of people um, have had to move out of town because they can't afford the taxes and go elsewhere where there's more services that, that can provide them with their needs and, and so on and so forth. And, and other, you know, and people that have lived there here their whole lives, you know, have to do reverse mortgages in order to stay in their homes. And, and so hopefully this is a step towards um, lessening that burden for people. And also, just an example, um, Anis and Anis, and I think it was sold, and I may not be aware of the new name now. George's. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, but that was, that was a special permit use, and um, the board has given numerous special permits for each uh, re revival of that, of that use um, when sort of the history of the property um, that's been something that's been used that way. So it also has an impact for the owners coming in, knowing that um, even though this may have been used as a convenience store for the last 15, 20 years, they still have to come in and get a special permit, which uh, may or may not be granted for X, Y, or Z reasons. Um, by going to site plan and having standards laid out in the zoning bylaw, we can more specifically say, you know what, as long as you you stay within the confines of the zoning bylaw, um, have the right parking, have the right uh, loading, right for health and approvals. Um, you, know, you don't have to worry about a special permit being taken away um, because maybe uh, some things outside your control have happened. That's, that's the kind of certainty that we're trying to uh, instill on some of the projects. Uh, it doesn't prevent the town from enforcing the zoning bylaw by any means. Um, because also special permit decisions can be written fairly vaguely and we have some that maybe don't provide the clarity that they should because if we're dealing with special permits that were approved 20 years ago that are still enforced. Um, so moving to site plan does not, as, as John said, take away our ability to review, nor does it take our, way, our ability to enforce standards as well. So, so that people can know that it's not like we're just saying all these things are now approved uh, so that 
you know, non-compliance can still be held. Yes. Yes, uh, you got the lower end of uh, Central Street, uh, this route, the cemetery area, I believe that's busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what's the outlook for that section of Central Street to be sidewalks and uh, do something about the condition of the road? Because of the, the, the traffic is very heavy mm -hmm. from Rhode Island over. And there's been a couple of uh, accidents up there at the intersection of Providence and the Central Street. Uh, what's going to happen at, as far as the town goes? Does that come under Chapter 140, or does that town have to put the tab on that soon? Well, I, I believe, I believe, and I'm not 100% correct on this, Joe might be able to correct me, but in a lot of instances in some certain uh, cities and towns when a business decides they're going to come in and, you know, open open shop in, in a certain section, um, if they're going to create an amount, a certain amount of traffic, an uh, increase in a certain amount of traffic, um, then they're made to widen the road and pr provide sidewalks for X amount of feet before and after the business. Um, stuff like that, you know, we we could put into our um, our zoning changes, I believe, Joe. Right? But well, I mean, some of that. If, if there's a direct connection as far as they're going to create an unsafe situation, uh, right. making, requiring making uh, pedestrian improvements. I think more importantly, we're dealing with an existing condition and a problem that that is annually increasing, and the bike. The bike uh, trail that comes through is not going to make things any easier. If anything, it's going to uh, attract more local users, and they're going to be coming down that sidewalk. Um, there are state programs that I think you know we'll be able to take advantage of to to assist in uh, doing some of those things. And uh, this this Mass Works application that I referred to um, would be a perfect program, but again, it's. That's where the planning piece and why we're, we're working hard to try to have that in place so that we can start applying for some of these funds because you know this is going to this is going to be a, it's a state and regional really because we're talking about Rhode Island resource that's coming into place and um, there's uh, some existing needs that you know, really we should be looking at assistance and partnering with the state to make sure that it's safe for everyone and we want to encourage people to come down the village center we want to encourage them to come down to George's to, to get some drinks and snacks uh, from the bike way. We want to make it easier, we don't want to make it harder. Mm -hmm. Any other? I, I support it uh, fully uh, in that it's an essential first step to move forward. It's a small step, but it's a big step for the town of Milton. Right. And there's a lot more, a lot more steps after this one, as Joe was saying. Right. But that's, like Joe said, that's when state grants come into play. But until we have our things in order, they don't even look at us for a state right. grant. I think it's you know for the people who have homes that have space that they might be able to do something. In fact, my grandfather had a store right there on Central Street. Right. So, I mean, I think it allows for the, the ease of that, even on the corner of West and um, Central years back, they wanted to put a pizza shop in and they couldn't get it in because of a special permit from the neighborhoods and it probably would have been a decent location for something like that. So I think it's important that we, we have that. And I, I do think we have to take the concerns, you know, for the areas when those bigger businesses come in, as far as our roads, our roadways, mm -hmm. especially in like, um, what do you have, Press, well, Preston has a sidewalk, but- Lincoln Street area. Lincoln yeah. area, yeah. you know, we've got to make sure, and working mm -hmm. with the highway surveyor and finding out, um, you know, if we can use chapter 90 funds or a strap, you know, grant comes through, you know, something out there for us, sorry, Tim, for us to, um, make him aware of that too that that could be a possibility i know the former highway surveyor tried to get the sidewalks extended from the end um from right the upper chest uh, 
Central to the Providence Street area, and it was there was so much um, drawback from the residents because it was going to take up the yard space and the whole thing, and and it was a very difficult task to get sidewalks there when Alfonso went in because they were hoping to sidewalk all the way for safety because of the the amount of people moving in there and was unable to. So even like Chestnut Hill Road, some of that area, you know, we have to kind of. Um, take that into account when we let these businesses in. And I know that the planning board will take that into account, but I think maybe we should give a heads up to our highway surveyor and let him know, you know, if this mm -hmm. does go through, to start looking at these potential areas to use some of that chapter money for improvements. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, giving him the heads up, you know, he might have two, two jobs that he's planning to use that money for. So it might be some shifting and creating um, in his department to, to, you know, get this get it safe and not only safe but appealing right. to want to put your business there yeah. so and I think it's our responsibility to keep it safe because I, I mean I live on Providence so I know that that corner is um, you know a bit dangerous there yeah. so um, but no I mean I support it I think it's going to help those people along the way you know I mean the outlying highway part it's going to bring more of a bigger type of businesses it's a little different but um, right. I think it's going to be a good thing yeah, and, that, and that's uh, the Village Center of Business District um, will allow mixed use to get back to those that, that want to use it. Um, the historic nature of Melville was shops and residences above. Uh, we have numerous examples where uh, people, you know, not very old can remember things like that in town. And we want to create a, uh, a component of the bio that allowed that to come back um, because it is so much you know, the part of our history and, and you look at the structures and you know that was used as a shop or as a deli or, or um, and to allow for some of that history to come back and you know we are very concentrated uh, in, in the center of town here um, not all parcels are going to allow to be really developed in a, in a, in a manner that uh, and, and I'm not advocating for Duncan Nose, I'm just using it as an example uh, to allow for Duncan Nose to come into town. Um, but there may be some parcels that do allow for something that, that is larger in nature and square foot. And um, you know, the, the idea is to allow for that process and work with people to find where that may be fit and then to mitigate the impacts that may occur in the neighborhood. But right now, we can't even. Um, even if there was a way of approaching someone to come into town and we describe our process, you know, it, it's too wrought with insurance, uh, uncertainty to really give an investor an idea of that, okay, I can devote ten, twenty thousand dollars to preparing plans without even having a certainty on whether they get approval at the end. I mean, that's, that's what this is really about, to give people the certainty that if they go through this process, they address these concerns, they can have a reasonable expectation on what the end product is. Thank you to the whole planning board. I know this has been quite a, a process and endeavor. So. Um, the warrant, when does the warrant close? Yeah, the first meeting in October, I think it might be the sixth. You all set for that, Joe? Yeah, like I said, this, this, is, this isn't hard writing to the article. It's philosophical. This is this is sort of a, a little bit of a jump for wards <coughs> and residents to sort of adopt this. But adopting a map, which the MRPC is almost done with, adopting a table, and then the description of the article, that's that's the easy part. So. I don't think it's gonna be as hard of a sell as you think. Mm -hmm. No. I really don't two thirds I, fifteen two -thirds. years ago it would have been. <laughs> not today. No. Every single town planner has to approach it like you're pushing a stone up yeah, uh, the Himalayas. <laughs> so if you don't approach it, then you take things for granted and you miss things. Yeah. So yes, my understanding is that it is essential that we pass this uh, or adopt a new map and whatever so that we can move forward. Mm -hmm. But that Absolutely. moving forward is not going to happen tomorrow. It's still years <laughs> away. Exactly. But by adopting this, we'll have something. The word will go out. The word will travel 
faster than you may think. But really? You think we'll get a dozen donuts in here? Well, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first step, but it's going to take a while before yeah. we get to the point yeah. where we're. Yeah. 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 That's why we want input. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do we currently have any big um, opposition to this plan going forward? This is my first meeting, so I'm just yeah. No, not nothing. I don't know. Okay. And that's part of this was we had a previous meeting with the board of selectmen to sort of make sure we were on the right path. We wanted to invite people and in also for um, for the audience at home so that this can also run um, you know, when Millville cable runs. People will hopefully catch a little bit of a precursor. We put this out on Facebook. We're gonna put out uh, some of the final language on Facebook and on our website so we can at least get the message out so that when we do have our, our um, fall town meeting that you know it's not gonna catch anyone by, by surprise. But we also want to give the opportunity that if people do have questions or concerns that they can uh, come and approach the planning board members mm -hmm. or myself uh, with any comments they may have. Right. So any potential uh, future businesses or whatever, they can look forward to uh, not a special permit or anything like <coughs> that. Well, if a, if a chemical plant says, hey, we're yeah. going to come and put up a facility, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Right. There's going to be special yeah. permits. And, so no. that's the type of stuff we're going to turn. Yeah, mom yeah. and pop shops is what we want. We want this to look like 1950s. Yeah, we don't want to make it all business. You know, Believe yeah. me. And there isn't that we much keep room in local. But if we could possibly bring in any type of small businesses, even back to the homes like the corner of Einstein Street and Central Street, there was a store there before. You can still see the front of it. Yeah. it uh, that's what we're looking for. I mean, we're never going to get, I don't believe, any huge businesses until we go through this whole process and apply to the state probably for grants of some sort, and then maybe up around 146 area. You're in a better position. You're in a better yes. right. If you think back, okay. it's, it's not long ago when Borax and, and the liquor store was right there. Right here. Yeah, right know, downtown. The, the borax had the market deli. Yeah. How long do you guys think this whole process will take? Well, I mean, they, we're hopeful that this will, will pass in the fall. Um, our intent is to have the revised um, master plan for annual town meeting in the spring so people can understand and then remainder of the fall, winter, early spring, we're, we're going to be holding our, our sort of community outreach to get uh, feedback. Um, our own internal assessment, and this is when I when I said that um, we've really found a lot of the recommendations in the findings. The only thing that's really changing is the years and maybe some of the population numbers. It it was a well uh, thought out process. It had a lot of good recommendations um, that really apply today. Um, we didn't see through uh, um, after 2000, we didn't see this huge boom of residential development that would have had a primary, uh, that would have really changed our whole approach. Um, we're still in the position to protect a lot of open space. Um, we've, we've actually addressed some of the recommendations. We have a open space residential development bylaw. Um, you know, we have cycling review with this, you know, we can have some uh, more concentrated development. The rail trail was a dream back then. It sometimes still seems like it's a dream, but at least they're working on it. Um, that will, that will uh, soon come. You know, the, the work that um, has been done to date, you know, it's, I know it's almost 20 years seems like a lot of time, but Millville hasn't changed that significantly that it made that effort back in 96 irrelevant or outdated. Um, so we're actually uh, sort of starting from a very good foundation. Um, we went through an exercise to review goals and policies and it's like, well, outside of some of the ones we've actually done, they still, they still are valid today. And so we're summarizing, we're updating so that we can go back to the town and say, look, here were our open space and conservation goals. 
and recommendations. Are they still valid? Do we want, still want to see this? Do we want to have the village as more of a walkable, some area with stores and stuff? Of course we do. That was then, we want that now. Um, you know, public facilities, uh, we have that elementary school, we see sort of like overall projections and populations, we're still around the same. We're not like other towns where we're in the need of building huge facilities to deal with um, swelling kindergarten class sizes. We, we have been, we've had some you know, ups and downs, but it's not this, um, this upward curve that then really changes how you approach everything. So I think at the end of the day, you know, we're gonna have a, a product that comes out of the planning board it's something that people will recognize from back then, but really is recognizable today that is still reiterated um, you know, by the board and members of the board of select So Joe, just to follow up, if this is, this will be on the special town meeting in November. Mm -hmm. It will be approved, hopefully. It will go to the state to be reviewed. And it will come back to us. How long does that typically take? Uh, about two months. Okay, so that's a, so you're talking maybe February-ish. And at that point, people can start applying for business permits? Uh, no, they can have, uh, you mean, like, say approvals through the planning board for right. um, Once town meeting acts on it, that bylaw um, can be applied okay. like that's your guiding document. You don't have to wait for the The main thing is out. that if there's areas that conflict, say with the old and the new, mm -hmm. You sort of have to watch out for that gray area because if the AG's office said, you know what, we reject this, right. you revert back to the old. Okay. For bylaws such as what we did, the renewable energy, where it was very technical, it was very elaborate, that had more of a chance of, say, the AG's office turning it down. Um, anything that really sort of pushes out the envelope as far as zoning. Here, we're, we're literally just changing a map, yeah. and we're changing a use table to add uses that are consistent with what we've already done. We're actually addressing a legal point that if it hadn't been on the books for so long, no one would have picked it. If we want to change our zoning to require every non-residential use to be a special permit, the AG's office would turn that down. You have to allow very some of those uses as um, either site plan approval or as of right. Right now, residential is the only thing that's allowed by right. Okay. So this actually addresses something that when I first came on board, I said, well, yeah, you could get in trouble if someone appealed, but okay. yeah, no one necessarily is gonna appeal some of those because you wanna work with the town. So, but you know, this does address. So once town meeting approves of it, you got it. Residents or people can start to look into it and take exactly. advantage of that. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Mr. Here's a question about the map. Uh, I live on Central Street. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious why all of Central Street is not included. You just have that one little gap there between Daisy and Providence. So that's something that uh, the map is still in discussion. Um, this is where, sort of going back and forth, uh, we've arrived at, and you know, if, if, if your comment is to, well, I think you know, that should all be included. We have um, you know, four planning board members that have heard your comment. Uh, the reason why I had done that was to sort of allow for some separation um, to, to push the, the village more towards the, the center and allow for somewhere there's sort of a higher density um, in historic homes and then allow for sort of a, a separation so you're not running from commercial to commercial. Along Main Street it's a little different because you have, as you come in, you start hitting some of these commercial uses and then you hit more residential and then you hit the village center. So that's why it's more of a, a continuous from border to border. Um, I, I would say that uh, the long central, that's still a discussion point that um, should the board feel, you know what, let's just go uh, all along and that, that void is really not necessary, you know, that would be a decision for the board. As I look a little closer at that section that is circling black, there's like 
looks like there's one blue hash mark in there. Is that the highway district in between, looks like Pearl and Chesley? Yes. I just want to go to the larger. I think it's just an answer. Yes. Yeah. So you guys want to make that uh, highway business district right there? No. So that little ink dot, um, this is where, why I'm working with CMRPC so they can do the mapping. So that an error in Microsoft Paint that I made doesn't all of a sudden become something we're stuck with forever. That's, that's just an error. I was trying to correct a, when I deleted the side of the road, I was trying to put it back and apparently it comes out blue rather than the gray I wanted. All right, with that being said, then, too, one last question. Looking at the blue and black and the differences on your use table, it looks like there's really only one difference, if, unless there's more explanation. The only difference I see is the seller or basin being used as a well between the village center and the highway business district. Through the whole chart, everything else is the same. The whole use table. Except Actually, that one. The, and thank you for mentioning that because the um, the main thing is that um, along with the village center, there's going to be more, um, uh, and this is what this is sort of part of the process. There's going to be more design guidelines and purposes that will go along with that that bylaw. The, the, when we describe the the, the districts um, in the zoning bylaw, you, you provide provide a little bit of um, a descriptor as part of what the overall goal, and the goal for the uh, for the village center business district is going to be more of a um, allowing for mixed use uh, reflective of the village sort of design um, density pedestrian uh, connections and the highway is going to be more of a traditional so this reflects that um, originally uh, like on the last page of the use table mixed use um, uh, and actually it should really be no, no SP and then SP. Um, village residential and village center should not have uh, mixed use. Um, originally, I had it as just mixed use, and after this, we're actually going upstairs to talk a little bit more about this. Um, uh, I included that as special permit because not knowing what may be out there. We may want to allow for some mixed use uh, development outside of the village center. Uh, but the uses are fairly similar, but it will come down to when we adopt regulations in that guidance documents uh, on how that starts splitting. And it really ends up being along the historic nature of the center uh, business district versus roadside, which would be more new construction. Our hope is that uh, within the village center there's existing structures that could be brought back to life um, and allow for multiple uses versus uh, someone wants to on Main Street uh, put in a convenience store. Let's just say they were looking at the um, uh, American Legion. That's a site that gets totally redeveloped. That's where we have some of this land and we're dealing with different uh, sort of land use development strategies seen in the center. So some of these do mirror each other and the the uh, the division between the two was intentional to allow for recognition of those two different areas. So there's nothing really put together yet as far as what's going to be highway and what could be village? It's, this map will, but when we put together the, the final language for the article, there's going to be the purpose statement for this district that will provide a little bit more of um, a description uh, for town meeting. The, the board of town meeting. Yep, that will be part of the uh, final submission for the warrant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Just, I'd like to add something. If anybody's interested, like Joe said, our meeting we have upstairs after this meeting. Is our regular plan for you? Anyone who has any suggestions or changes they'd like to talk about, please come up and to our meeting and or let us know. Or let us know at one of our other meetings before this gets to a town meeting. We'll be glad to listen. Yeah. And we will have to schedule a public hearing as well. Right. Um, so there's multiple non-working meetings, but then also there's the 
uh, public hearing that will be uh, need to be scheduled as well, most likely the end of um, October, so we have enough time to make changes if needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Hey. Thank you. You're welcome to stay for our seven o'clock meeting. <laughs> or not. Welcome uh, to the September 15th, 2014, 7 p.m. Selections Meeting. Would everyone please join for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Would everybody Please stand. Um, we'd like to have a moment of silence tonight for the unspeakable tragedy in um, Blackstone, and um, our sympathy goes out to the families involved. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Board of Selectmen would like to thank everybody and uh, for showing interest Saturday at the senior band dedication and blessing ceremony and a special thanks to Senator Moore and Representative Curls for their attendance uh, and also uh, you can find the town of Millville on social media how's about that uh, we're on Facebook and um, Twitter at Millville MA that's it for announcements uh, next for uh, Scheduled guests and speakers. We have Superintendent Himmelberger. Um, so welcome and come up and have a seat. This is our, our new uh, superintendent for the BMR School District and we're very um, honored and happy to have you here, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's a pleasure to be invited and uh, it's been, as you can imagine, a busy couple of months, but uh, uh, the year is off to a great start, and I, I took the liberty of just putting down a few things on the uh, that are topical right now that I could give the board an update if, if so desired. Okay, great. Yes, please. Thank you. Thanks. Um, as everybody knows, uh, we have the Millville Elementary School um, having its roof replaced, and that project um, just began. On the second page of the of the handout, you can see the. Original project budget was $1.5 million, $1,530,558 to be exact, and, and the town share is 42.26, and the school building authority uh, reimburses the balance, 57.74%. Uh, the construction budget for the project was $1,266,494, um, and my second day on the job, the bid was awarded, and um, actually the bid was opened, I'm sorry, and the low bid came in at 960000 um, which is a good use of the, um, the, the bid process. There was also um, a bid alternate one, and that amount was 40000 and I understand there was some questions around that. Apparently, the architect had looked at, um, with their engineers, they had mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers looking at the building. There were some rooftop units, both air handlers and air conditioners. Um, and the air conditioning units were uh, deemed to be really past useful life. And while the project was ongoing and while the roof was open, it seemed to make sense to um, replace them. And then there's, there's also the question of, I guess, two air handlers 
where the cores had just been um, totally beyond useful life. So that bid alternate one went out with the bid um, and with the, with the intent that if the bid was low enough and under that construction budget amount that it could be then used. Um, and apparently from what I've been able to ascertain, MSBA will pick up or reimburse the town for the cost of taking the old out and repairing the roof but they would not reimburse for the, um, the cost of the new and the installation. However, as you can see, we are currently in a very favorable position because we are under the construction budget by $266,494. Now that's as of now because although it doesn't seem to be many, if any, change orders, projects always have a way of uh, getting credits and change orders as they, they go through the, the uh, amount of time it takes to complete. But as you can see, the town's share at 42.26 would then be reduced by that $112,620, which is very good news. So um, this project, um, the bid was opened on July 2nd. Uh, the contract was then awarded and signed to MDM. Um, roofers on July 24th. The uh, notice to proceed was issued on July 25th. The work did not begin until September 2nd and apparently given the materials needed to complete that project, um, the, the summertime is when every roof in America gets replaced on schools and for that metal fascia that was needed around the, the edge of the roof there's only a handful of companies and only one, I guess, that could, could make the delivery when it, uh, even to get it done for this summer uh, cycle. So that is why it didn't begin until September 2nd. Um, however, the weather has been uh, very, very positive and that really does help the uh, contractor uh, make up some of the time that's built into that, that timeline. Um, it appears that the substantial completion should be uh, on October 24th with the project wrapping up November 7th. So if that, again, if the weather holds, then we look to be in pretty good shape. Um, and all things being equal, this should come in under budget, uh, which is good news. Um, we did have a couple of glitches because as you can imagine, uh, the logistics of the roof project ongoing and then moving classrooms around as noise comes and goes throughout different parts of the building, as well as the storage of materials on site and the access that the contractors needed necessitated uh, rerouting um, much of the traffic flow both before and after school. Um, Everyone will, will know that there used to be a, uh, the ability to circle the school behind uh, to uh, circumvent the buses, certainly in the afternoon. And um, so there was some, some concerns about how best to handle that. And, and uh, Chief Landry, who I've gotten to know pretty well in a short period of time, uh, came up last Tuesday and he and I looked at the uh, dismissal time and how best to make the traffic flow with student safety, staff safety as the number one overriding concern. And so um, the first couple of days of school, like any back to school, the, the children are a little unsure of how to and where to go. The staff also is trying to make sure that everyone is, is in the right spot. So those first few days were a little um, bit of a challenge, but I think now we have um, really mastered the art of the dismissal. We know it's a, a, an imposition on the school community certainly, um, but we'll get a pretty darn good roof that will last us for the next uh, 20 or 25 years. So that's the goal, along with the student safety, and I can't stress that enough. Um, just one point for anyone um, who is concerned about the dismissal, you can certainly park around in front of the buses um, as you circle beyond the school um, on the right-hand side, not in the parking lot, but you can line up along the fence 
And so for those folks who do need to pick up at the end of the day and are pressed for time, that's where I would suggest you park because then you're ahead of the buses. Okay. Um, although, um, as we looked and we timed it, and I believe Officer Shepard was also there to assist, um, as we timed it, the time really was at the time eight minutes to wait for all the buses to clear. And uh, last Tuesday, there was only five cars. So uh, we hope that that time is um, uh, reducing so it's the impact on families is as minimal as we can possibly make it. Okay. Um, and I'll probably get out there and look again uh, a couple of days this week to see how we're doing. So um, the safety issues, as I said, are really what governs the project as, the, as they move around the building. Um, and there is a sequence to it as to how they're attacking the building uh, to get it done in the most efficient um, manner. Um, I, I believe that because we have the owner's project managers on site every day, that we now get daily updates as to where they're moving next. And so that our custodial staff administration, we can really uh, manage the day-to-day -day differences that are presented mm -hmm. uh, to us. Um, it was great to have the students back. I know over the course of the summer, we get a little tired of looking at each other in the office. And uh, so when the kids come back, it is just uh, terrific. And I was invited Friday evening to the ice cream social which I believe was the first time they had done it. And uh, there had to be uh, probably two thirds, if not more of the students there. Um, and uh, it was a, a great event with a lot of families, a lot of parents uh, there as well. And uh, it was uh, really a great way to kick off the year. Um, that building is a phenomenal, as you know, a phenomenal school. Um, the physical structure in the plant has been maintained very well. And it's hard to imagine that that building's 22 years old. It really is a tribute to those folks that have maintained it over the years um, and the care that it gets from everybody who uses it. Um, it is a uh, fantastic uh, building. Um, can I just? Sure. Um, I think you should let them know not only were you invited, but you were scooping. Yeah, the ice cream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, you were invited to, he, he was hard at work. I wasn't invited just to yeah. partake, yeah. right, yeah. right. Yeah. It was a setup. Yeah. I get diverted to the other side, but he was, he was scooping ice cream it was, for all of the students. It was pretty neat to be there and certainly to meet, um, you know, one of our retirees from, I guess, just this past year, Mrs. Yeah. Smith, oh, who was just oh, phenomenal. Yeah. I told her, I said, I feel like I'm in, 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 with royalty of being there she, with you. She's she was, native. Yes, she was telling she, me. I'm sure yeah, she did. Yeah, so, I mean, it was just really a terrific event. Great way to kick off the year. Um, I also, on no, item number three, I did get um, an email from uh, Robert Ferrari, who is uh, with Northeast uh, Water Solutions. Mm -hmm. um, and he had sent me the email and also a follow-up from a memo that he had sent to MassDEP and um, the work that, that NWSI has done on your water uh, system at Millville Elementary is, is pretty spectacular. Um, I, I wish I paid better attention in high school chemistry because a lot of what he was telling me was way over my head. Uh, but that's normal. Uh, yeah, he's, but uh, he's he is, knows what he's talking about, yeah. and um, I enclosed both the the mail the the letter that he had sent to MassDEP last May, as well as uh, his follow up introductory email to me, and um, I got a chance to meet with with Mr. Ferrari and uh, Glenn Alby as well, who knows as much about that building as anybody with the, when it comes to water. And uh, also our, our uh, head custodian, uh, Mr. Langto, although I think no one knows him by that name, and, um, and Mrs. Desai and myself. So the, the bottom line is that their feeling is that the water is drinkable. Um, I know that folks have been down that road before and heard that in the past. Um, certainly the water chemistry has changed a lot over the years, but it sounds like, and certainly seems by all indications and test results, that uh, MassDEP and everybody else declares it a well, uh, well under any particular standards uh, for concern and very drinkable. Um, and I think what we were going to do is wait. They're going to put in internet um, connectivity so they can monitor 
the um, readings for um, all of the um, metrics to judge if the water is, is safe or not. So they can monitor that in real time. And so once they, and they're supposed to be doing that this week. So I think once they have that up and running, uh, that's the right time to send home uh, the letters to everybody to let them know that the water is safe um, and certainly um, without getting too bogged down in all of the technical pieces of it, the bottom line is they can certainly see and have access to the readings and to see that the water itself is, is very, very much drinkable and safe. And, um, you know, everything that, that I do is with one thing in mind, that's student and staff safety. And it doesn't matter what it is. And certainly this, from roof projects to water to um, anything else, uh, that's what is most important. So I, it's really uh, great to see that this is a very, very um, talented company. And uh, these gentlemen really are, are, are pretty impressive in what they can, uh, what they can manage. So that's the good news uh, there. So actually, one, two, and three so far, good news. The, the you can drink the water right now. Absolutely. It's passable. Yes, it is. They just do yes, another it step. But yeah. if you had to, it's safe right now. Yes, sir. Yes, it, it very much is. Um, and it has been, I guess, for a that's, while. That's, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, we I think, were, what... There was a safeguard put in. Yes. And we wanted to make sure it wasn't going to come back, like we right. said, and this and that. So yep. I would have to say, moving forward, it, it's a done deal. It's yeah. safe, and they're doing a very good job at it. And as soon as they get that internet connectivity so they can monitor real time, we'll send a letter home. Okay. And that should be this week. Yeah, excellent. Um, the... Um, in that roof project, I think what I'll do is, is through Helen, I'll give the updates and, and really get you dollar for dollar as to where we are within the project scope and sequence. So you'll have a, a clear understanding of the flow. Um, as I said, it'll inconvenience the, the families and, and, the, in the, and the staff for the first seven weeks of school, but at that point we'll get it buttoned up for winter and have a, um, a very, very solid roof um, for a long time. Um, the other point that, again, I, I think I inherited from Dr. Davis, and he, he forgot to tell me all the pieces of it, was the uh, kitchen floor at, at the school. And um, I know that there was some uh, cracking of the substrata, and the floor had really started to pull apart and wear, and it had, I guess, happened um, occasionally over time. Um, there was a ter this company that did the work, Stone Guard, um, which is based in New Jersey, but has um, branches throughout New England really uh, knew what they were doing and uh, did the work as promised, did it on time, did a terrific job. Um, and the total cost to them, I believe, was 24857 There was also a few dollars involved in the disconnecting of the plumbing and the electrical pieces and the, re the reconnecting of that. And I wanted to get those exact dollars to you as well, and I will, I will make sure I email them to you. I have a question on that. Sure. Okay. But my understanding from one of our meetings, when we went through this, the price that we had was not to repair the floor. Mm -hmm. It was to replace the floor. Yeah. Now we come back and we hear it's a repair job. Yeah. Usually well, when you're dealing with pops in this, and I've done enough of floors. Yeah. Once you repair it, it yep. basically like a brand new floor, but the point being I'm making is we put a bid in and it came back, if I'm not mistaken, if any board members want to correct me on it, I believe in our minutes we had it, it was a replace the floor right. price. Right. Again, I know you walked in on it. Yeah, no, but, I, but it's a good point. It's a good distinction to make because what I saw them doing was actually digging up the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if, they, I'm sure they didn't go all the way down to grade, but they did put get in the skin coat off. Yeah, I don't know how deep they went, but um, I would invite everyone to come in and take a, a look at it because, yes, there. I believe the warranty on the on the labor is one year, but um, it looks to me like um, a well done job. I know it did not get replaced, as in down to grade and then rebuilt, but it was in fact. Um, um, the way they had dug it up and then adhered and resurfaced, to me, was a, was a very, very uh, solid uh, effort. 
and it should serve that building well for a long time. And again, we can't predict, you know, structural shifts and all the other stuff that happens to buildings over time. But I believe that that uh, that kitchen, I mean, it it's brand new, and and the way they put that back together with and, and freshly painted it, um, and cleaned it and reconnected everything, it's uh, it's a pretty darn good job. Okay. So. Um, and I could get some more, because I do have some of the technical pieces to that floor project. I could get those and, and make copies and pull them together yeah, for steps, you. Yeah, absolutely. Do that. Yeah. Do because it's an epoxy. Yes. That, that one price we did receive, John, was uh, did not include uh, removal and reinstallation of the plumbing and electrical. No, right. I, I know that. that I'm just so talking yeah. about the floor. Exactly right. what well, we're Well, that's why to, if, yeah. if he's able to give us the breakdown, we might see a big difference. Yeah. I, it'll, it'll be interesting. I can go back and see what, again, because I, I walked in on it having already no, been I, I put, put to bed. But the job that, I, the finished job that I saw and the amount that they did dig up um, and replace seemed to be um, not not cosmetic in any stretch, but really to address the problem of um, the floor uh, separating and pulling. Okay. So, but I can I can find the um, yep. the specs and the technical um, material that goes with that. I think one of the important things we have to think about for the future is that that floor, the condition that it was in, that deteriorated over time. It wasn't a, you know it happened last week and we looked at it. And, that thing had I been like that, I understand cracking that. That's and not where getting I'm, bigger and bigger. That's not where I was and, going with that. But yeah. hold on a second, I'll tell you where I'm going. Where I'm going is, we've got a new, not new, but a, a reconditioned floor. It looks like new, and I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it looks just like it's brand new. We need to be more proactive. If we see a crack, if we see damage, we need to take care of it at that point. Because if we let it sit for a year, two, five years, it ends up being a project like this. Right. Whereas if we can get ahead of it and, and make the minor repairs that need to be done, we could probably keep ourselves out of a lot of trouble. Well, that's where it comes to you people being the overseers in there with mm -hmm. your custodians and this and that. Yep. Yeah. There are ears and eyes. They need to feed back to you people Absolutely. so you people feed back to us because we don't walk in that building unless, we number one, we have a reason or we want to do an escort or we want to take a look around or this and that. But basically, we get most of our information from your uh, custodian engineers and mm -hmm. yep. teachers and yep. the school committee. Yep. Yep. Unless you yeah. tell us, yeah. well, how would yep. we know? But I would certainly welcome the board to uh, come on up and, and take a walk through and, because the, the entire building is, is very impressive in the amount of, of care that it gets. But the concern on the kitchen floor I know was, was real because it had happened before. Right. And um, so, uh, I'll, I'll make sure I dig up the technical like, support. Since you're talking for about that. that, who's the overseer of the roof? Who makes the final decision spending this kind of money, the taxpayers and everything like that? Who's the final person that inspects it and gives it to, its blessing? The state or to the school committee and the state? Yeah, the, the rules of the engagement now with the school building authority is they uh, require us to have an owner's project manager that is qualified and certified by the school building authority because they have a fair amount of dollars on the table as well but also a commissioning agent that must sign off on it and has the ability to make sure that there, if there are changes that are necessary to the final product that they that they are taken care of typically the commissioning agents are on site throughout the project so we're going through that now at the high school and so they're on site throughout the project to make sure that if there are uh, engineering issues if there are construction issues that they are taken care of and handled so that all of the um, uh, warranties are in place and so there's a lot of um, checks and balances now with with building projects that are that are financed through the school building authority um, because of the the amount of um, in most cases their for most buildings, they have about 58% and the towns pick up the 42%, but it's still real money. And so the goal is to get the best quality, longest lasting, most efficient product without overspending. Well, there's a reason why I asked you that, no, yeah. because I had people ask me, I didn't have the answers, you just gave the people the mm -hmm. answers. 
The second reason why I asked is because at Blackstone High School, when they put the roof down, it was told to us they had like 18 leaks. There were cert certain things that weren't in place that should have been in place. People weren't ch doing check and balance. On the previous installation or on the current project? Current one. Yeah, I haven't. This was said yeah. by the school committee. Yeah. At the high school or at the? High school. Complex. High school. Yeah, I, that work began at the end of June. Um, we did have one leak. Um, I mean, that's, that's down the road, but I mean, right. but moving I, forward with this new one with elementary school, yep. which this town is responsible for yep. as the building, I, would, I just want to know where to check it balances. Yeah, and, and I would, would respectfully come back to the board whenever the, the right time is to keep you updated as to where that project is. Um, but, but please do know that there's a commissioning agent that um, will, will has the final say. There is a, an owner's project manager that has to work hand in hand with the architect um, to make sure that the contractor is doing exactly what the, the requirements and specs call for, absolutely. John, um, I think that incident, and Brian correct me, um, didn't Mrs. Shaver, didn't uh, Mrs. Shana Hood do like a video from the rooftop and what they were, weren't they replacing something? It wasn't a it was roof a project, it was, it was, was a... Uh, Mr. Buckley, they were up there. Yeah. And yes. that was when they were looking at the condition of the roof. That was after that. Did that they do winter? some work because of the, the shoveling of the snow? The insurance and company. That, the yeah, insurance company. I think that's when you're talking about the leaks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The roof project the roof just started. Right. Right. Well, yeah. I think that's the incident that's you're fine. talking about. Just, because yeah. they hired I just have they concern were shoveling. who yeah. the check and balance is. Yeah. Yes. The current high school roof project is, is proceeding uh, pretty well again. Uh, th there was one leak that was because of the they were, of where they were in the stoppage before that heavy rain. We've only had two really uh, rain dates all summer, um, mm. which makes That's for lousy thing. lawns but quicker roof projects to yeah. get them completed. Um, yeah. But on the current on the current projects, um, there is um, uh, tremendous oversight to to ensure that that okay. everything just is done properly. Um, but there were some at the complex too. There were some issues at the complex, and they've gone back in because yes. they don't get released until it's been thoroughly right. tested. And, and it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, there is. yeah. There is. there's money that that is. There was helpful. actually they did some additional work there because of the runoff. Um, they were finding that the snow was actually coming down in places that they didn't feel was safe. Some of the uh, entryways. Right. So they actually put some rails in mm -hmm. to divert some of that snow. And then when we do have a lot of snow, it's, it piles up. Oh, yeah. It piles up away from the building. There's kind of a probably a space a little bit bigger than the desk here that allows some room between the building and, and the snow banks to pile up. But that's yeah. how that one is designed. But there were, I know there were leaking issues there, but those I think are pretty much yeah. wrapped up. Yeah. Yes. I was just asking. Yep. No, it's it's a question that is always on our mind as we we have these project meetings uh, weekly to make sure that they are proceeding. Uh, so we don't want rain while we're working on it, but we want rain when they say they're done. We so want a lot of rain to test it out right away. Absolutely. To the yeah. We're going to have a good test this winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I would, I would certainly <laughs> offer to the board to come back um, as we go through this, this maybe one or two more times, um, and be happy to come back and report on the progress to make sure that we um, can address those uh, issues. And, and the last thing I want to say is that um, you know, I know that I'm the seventh superintendent in, in the past 11 years. Um, school committee was uh, gracious enough to give me a three-year contract, and I intend to fulfill that. Um, I spent nine years in Oxford and um, chaired the Medway, my hometown's school committee, um, and take the job as you do very seriously when you're in the public's trust. and. Um, I look forward to working with the town of Millville, with all of the elected officials. I look forward to uh, meeting with the community, and um, you know, my my door is always open, and I've said that. And uh, I even had parents come in and say, "Hey, I hear your door's open." Well, it, it is, and um, it has to be. So um, I look forward to a great year, and and I put the students first, and every decision I make is with their best interests. And that usually means that parents, taxpayers, voters, 
will also have their best interests met um, as well. And um, I know we had the uh, the notice for the uh, community uh, day that went home today. I, I, that went I home today for the today. October fourth uh, community uh, day. Yeah, the, the and, centennial committee yes. um, had gone to the school committee some time yeah. ago and asked. For, they don't send home flyers. It's kind of a green initiative, yep. and yep. Um, they, there's a virtual space online that you can find. So I, I sent it up, and then I got a, I got an email from Mrs. O'Neill, and she's like, "We can hand them out, but you know, you can come pick them up." And I'm thinking, "That's a lot of flyers I photocopied." Right. So um, I was able to did find the minutes, and minutes, I, yes. I conversed with your secretary, right. and um, all our right. Centennial October fourth yep. um, flyers went home today. And 2016 is the centennial. Yes. yes. Right. So. That'll be exciting. It will be. Yeah. And, um, and I can start tweeting those. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> um, and, and the last is that I know that uh, Mr. Raposa had come to a school committee meeting in August to ask about support for a green repair, green energy, I'm sorry, um, uh, initiative, and uh, would be happy to uh, support that. And uh, whatever I can do, and, and, uh, get the template, and I'll, uh, I'll wordsmith it so that it, um, it shows that the school district um, certainly is behind that because I think that's important um, to be able to use as many resources that are out there as possible. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to serve the, the, the students uh, of Millville and I, I certainly um, look forward to uh, three great years. Um, depends on the committee about any time after that, but uh, certainly um, I will do everything I can to, to make the, the educational um, opportunities uh, grow for every single student in, in our town. So, thank you very much for thank inviting you. me today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you for taking uh, the time. Uh, uh, Chairman, yes. if I could I ask a couple sure. of questions while we have the superintendent here. Um, back to item number one on the roof. Um, the air conditioning units, without having the election ballot question and the warrant readily available, I'm not sure that those air conditioning units are identified as being part of the ballot question. Um, I thought there was like an incidental clause within it. There is. It's appurtenances and related equipment. I don't know if air conditioning units is considered part of a roofing, re-roofing. Um, I just question that. I mean, if they're I, unusable I, I, in causing yeah. leaks or yeah. causing, I would think that they would be. I don't think I don't, I've ever done, well, I don't do the roofs. I do the electrical, but I don't think I've ever seen a roof go on without rooftop units coming off and going back on again. I just did two roofs. Yeah. Okay. I lifted 40 units off. Yeah. I think too. Some go back, some get replaced. Right. Yeah. I think too the the uh, the conversation was around what was more, what was best in the long term. And I know that the, the air conditioners, the, the air units were beyond useful life and deemed that they did have to be replaced. Now certainly we will you know, continue to work with MSBA to see how much can be covered. But, um, you know, certainly with the bid coming in where it did, mm -hmm. it, I think it makes sense. Uh, oh, absolutely. To, no question. Do I'm just I don't know concerned what, what, about the, yeah. the and language I can go back article. and look and see. Yeah, so we just want to make sure that related equipment covers HVAC. Right. And right. And I'm sure and the as, state will tell us. Yeah, and as it was explained well, to me. Our accountant will let us yeah. know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who I know <laughs> it turns out. Yes, yes, yes that's right. Um, Mrs. Matthew. So, oh, so yeah, yeah, I just wanted to, to point that out. Yeah. And my second let question. Let me double check. Um, with respect to the floor, yep. did that um, vendor happen to predict a useful life um, to that repair job just for capital planning purposes? I was going to try and reach him this afternoon for that exact question okay. in terms of um, what the expectation could be, um, and I got on something else. Okay, so, yeah, at some point, but that I is a question that I'd like to know so I can, you know, plan for that going forward, right. and I think that that is important. Um, and did they give a recommended care of it? I mean, I know we can't, you know, stop structural shifting. Yep. But yep. As far as to keep it appealing to the eye. Yeah. Um, I believe that they did because the custodial staff was there um, working. Okay. You know, when they were there, but I can certainly follow up on that. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Well, thank you. Thank you, right? thank thank you, you very much. Good to meet you all, and uh, look forward to uh, a busy three years. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd be happy to come back whenever the board would 
would requ request any further information, especially on this roof project as it goes through mm -hmm. um, the fall. So. And I think also, I'm sure Brian or your committee has informed you, you know, as budget season starts, um, yeah. we were a little caught off guard last year, and um, it, it was it was not always pleasant. Yeah. So I think just keeping that um, yeah. dialogue open and, and we're not going to have a budget yep. season. We're going to have perpetual budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, th I think yeah. that's important. Yeah. I think you're right. You know, and I know that. Budgets have a way of bringing out the best and the worst in us, and I think that the one way to be is to partner with the town and the committee. You know, my job is certainly uh, to advocate for a budget, but a budget that is realistic mm -hmm. um, and has to be for everybody. Um, and I'd rather hear the truth, even if it hurts. Yep. I'd rather um, be told than. Yep. And that to, for, to read between the lines. Yeah. So no, I I'm gonna. You're gonna find I'm pretty direct in my communication uh, early and often, and it's going to be based in fact, and it's not going to be um, pie in the sky. And, uh, oh, that's different. Yeah, it's going to be uh, direct. Uh, I was a business manager for four years, um, uh, and budgets, so especially in public education, sometimes get misunderstood, but at the end of the day, they should be able to be explained in, in, in layman's terms so that folks know where the dollars that are being requested are supposed to be going. And uh, that's important. So that will be uh, a promise from me that the, that the numbers will be backed up with appropriate documentation, that they will be, you know, certainly lots of conversation with the committee, with the school committee before we come to where the, the plans will take us, but at the end of it all, the more everyone knows about it, you don't have to agree with it, and you might not want to support it, but you'll know that they're real and they're based on fact. And, um, you know, the ongoing dialogue is important. And I think that that's the most important thing. And I know that just from the superintendent's office, it's important to build trust and, and credibility and, and again, not everyone needs to agree with me, but they certainly should be comfortable knowing how to get an answer um, from me. And I think that's certainly something that I, I pride myself on doing. So, okay. Thank yeah, you. look forward to uh, seeing you I think you the other thing, the thing we need to do as a school committee too is to come here and meet with you guys. I think the, the you know, saying that you guys are always invited to our meetings and you don't show up except for Joe. And, and you used to once in a while. We haven't seen you in a little while. Come on back. Come on down here. <laughs> but I think it's Brian. <laughs> Brian, I'd like to be there, but I'm at Girl Scouts. <laughs> so I, 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 I'd rather but be I think there. it's fair for us to, to the same expectation that we have for you guys to come and visit us. You should expect from us to come here, and I think that's where we haven't fulfilled that obligation. So there was there was talk about having a school committee meeting at the elementary school. Sure. Yeah, yeah, actually the, the discussions is, we've broken out some different teams, one of them being facilities, and we're gonna be working on some things to tighten up the facilities for those things that you brought up earlier. Um, and just to have that kind of that planning forward, you know, things that are aging, you know, things are getting over 20 years old yeah. in, in Millville, 22 years old, yeah. things are gonna go, you know? Yeah. Um, so we have to start planning for those and then getting you guys that information, but I think, um, you know, some of the discussion on the meetings themselves are talking about having some meetings here, having some meetings at the school, um, bring the show on the road a little bit. You know, yeah. it's great to be up the, at, the high, at the middle school every day, every time. But. Is the live broadcast ready at the elementary? Yes. Do we have all our equipment? We have all our equipment. Yeah, so that was one of the, the whole best. So we can, that's well, it's we live to Milton. Live to Milton, yeah. right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but we that's still have to. Blackstone's out alive. But we can um, share a DVD with Yeah, them. we can get it yeah. next day. Yeah. One day yeah. we'll all be Comcast anyway. Yeah. Eventually we'll Well, we'll that's been in discussions for a long time, charging Comcast. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, the federal government's kind of yeah. working it because so, oh, so it's, it's going to be a right. monopoly if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good night. Right. Thank you. Yes.
So next on the agenda, we have approval of minutes and warrants. I'll we'll wait till Jennifer comes back for the minutes. So Helen, would you like to read the warrants? Uh, we have no warrants. Okay, we don't have one. So. Okay. So Jennifer, we're gonna oh, yeah. look for approval for September second meet, uh, meeting minutes at seven p.m. I make a motion that we accept the minutes for September second, two thousand fourteen, at seven p.m. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have no warrants tonight. Uh, the historical commission and animal control officer. We're on the agenda, but are not present. So we'll move over to the first public forum. Uh, that's not present either. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, correspondence. Uh, we have a, we have the Polish club, but we'll leave that. Uh, the, uh, from Lisa LaRue, it's the, the school committee meeting August 14th, uh, she attended. Um, it was voted to reduce the assessment to each town by the amount listed below, which is, uh, and that was due to the uh, increase in transportation from the, from the state. And uh, uh, Blackstone will be uh, receiving back, well not receiving back, but their assessment will go down $116,105. Millville will go down 45917 And the second quarter assessment will be reduced pending the certification of EMD. So that's some good news. Uh, other correspondence, uh, we did meet at Valley Tech last week, the selection. Uh, some of us were able to attend. Um, so the uh, science lab, I mean the engineering lab that they were trying to, uh, that we asked them to, you know, when we lost some kids to, to try county vote, and it's a very expensive burden to the town, um, we asked the superintendent if there's anything, you know, we could do to stop the kids from leaving, and there wasn't. His answer was to create another engineering shop. Uh, as everybody knows, there was a ballot question, and it failed in, in more than two-thirds of the towns. So he couldn't open all three. So, but he, they, the school did have the monies available to go forward with, with the engineering, which was the particular one that Millville had asked for. So. Um, Thank you to Blackstone Valley Tech for their uh, uh, help with this matter, and it is going forward. So, Joe, did you have? I said it failed in four towns. Four towns, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you, know, you got to have four or three, three or less disapproved, but we had four disapproved. So, uh, but anyway, so that it's going forward. There are kids exploring that that shop now, and it is scheduled to be fully functional um, after the Christmas break when they go back um, to school. So, uh, anyway, so, but upon our invitation for a celebration, it was a setup. They had paint rolls and paint waiting for us to stop painting, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we did, but it was fun. Very, very impressed with, with the work done uh, by volunteers and, and so, Thank you to Valley Tech and uh, Jerry Finn also. So, yeah, and that's it for correspondence that I have. Mr. Chairman, yes, I just want to know that uh, piece that oh, correspondence uh, on yep. the, uh, the MMA uh, breakfast meeting. Yep. I just informed the board that I signed up for that for October 3rd. Okay, they're all Fridays, huh? Oh, no. Yeah, that I was hoping for a, a weekend. Yeah, and CMRPC does the same thing, it's always a Friday morning breakfast. Mm -hmm. Be nice to take a Friday out of work, but nobody's gonna pay my bills either. So, <laughs> thanks for going there, Joe. Okay. Uh, appointments and resignations. We have none tonight. Um, Helen, do you have a? I have nothing. Nothing. 
Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so old business, we have the energy reduction plan. Sure. So Joe, that's all you. I'll make this quick. Uh, I think we filled you in on uh, in the past our status. Uh, basically, uh, right now, I'll, my mission tonight is to ask for the board's support to, of the initiative to uh, bring uh, community status in Millville. Uh, there, there are five requisite uh, criteria that uh, the committee has to satisfy, and all those pieces are put together, those five criteria. Um, and with an affirmative vote tonight, uh, we will create a, a document to uh, send to DOER tomorrow. It will be, a one, be probably 100 pages of uh, information, all requested. In, in, uh, the five criterion was, Joe mentioned, the as of rights citing. That is also applicable to uh, the Green Energy Initiative. Criterion two is expedited permitting. Again, um, changes in bylaws and, and the like that have, have already been adopted by the town, as Joe indicated. The, the biggest piece of that was the energy, uh, uh, getting the, the data together for the energy uh, use baseline. And uh, that took the longest time in developing the energy reduction plan. Um, in, in August of 2003, we approved uh, the uh, vehicle uh, efficient policy and uh, uh, fuel reduction, fuel efficient vehicle uh, program. So we're, we're all clear there. And then finally, the stretch code adoption. Again, that was uh, approved uh, by town meeting on May 14, 2012. Um, what I, I do want to point out is that uh, the action we take tomorrow in sending this documentation to uh, DOER is that uh, what we're asking for is uh, a, re a review of our documents to see that they're, they're satisfactory or not deficient in any way that would preclude our uh, gaining uh, the designation of green community. And, uh, when they review that, they'll come back to the town or to the, the committee and uh, highlight anything that needs to be changed or improved upon. And the, the town has to uh, get there for, for the application for designation has to get in by October 17th. And some, and once we're designated a green community, we have between uh, sometime before January 14th um, do our grant applications. So that's, that's a sequence. It's the review. If we get the designation, then we put, put an application. Uh, I, I do want to point out that uh, to Mr. Lars' question, uh, Regarding the, uh, the fallout, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, uh, the repercussions if, if we fail in, in this system. I'll read directly from uh, the, the status of this. Uh, what happens is that the, the town has to report annually um, toward the progress of the 20% energy reduction goal. If at the end of six years a municipality has not reduced its energy consumption by 20%, it will be asked to provide justification for fulfilling its ERP, energy reduction plan. If a, if a municipality can demonstrate that it has done everything reasonably achievable to obtain reductions, then no further action will be required. If the municipality does not effectively demonstrate why it has not uh, reduced its consumption by 20%, then the municipality is at risk of losing its green community designation. 
a, a municipality will not lose its previously awarded grant funding as, as a result of not meeting the 20% reduction goal. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the, uh, the next piece of that. Uh, The, the big commitment of the town is, is uh, you know, it's, it's a five to six year commitment to, to, that we stick to the program. There are quarterly reviews involved, uh, and an annual report to DOER is required uh, every year. Uh, my concerns are what we need to get in line is the financial management of the grant funding. Uh, we have a fiduciary responsibility in that regard. Uh, project management and uh, coordination and scheduling. Um, and then we have presently, uh, well, our energy reduction plan has 20 projects on it. 18 of them are building related, two are uh, police fleet related. I split it up into two phases. The first phase, which is fully funded, has a payback accrued after five years of $135,000. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a favorable return. The phase two portion of it is that we have to, in this, in this period, we have to pursue competitive grants. The green energy uh, designation allows us to, uh, to participate in competitive grants. So we do, we'll have to be doing some grant writing in, in this period. Uh, but basically that's it. Uh, phase one will get us to 64% of our goal and we can get there within two years, I believe. And then we'll have three years to do the other court, you know, with competitive grants. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically it. I'll entertain any, any further question. I don't have I know, I think last week when Jerry, or last meeting, you yeah. and Jerry had talked, I think, you know, we covered a lot of it. Yeah. You know, we're waiting for the draft. I mean, it's extensive. I mean, there was a lot of work put into it. Yeah. So, no, I'm, I've been. And it's no toss to the town. It's just the paperwork to get the process it's, going. It's, it's the work and responsibility of the right. town. And the mm -hmm. Board of Selectmen and the Green Energy Committee, you know, to right. stick to it. Yep. No, it looks, looks good. Alrighty. So the, uh, the final draft, uh, this is essentially the final draft, would be look a little bit... Uh, draft be, number seven, I noticed. Well, it's actually really nine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, most, most of the questions uh, can be answered just by what, what you found in your pack. Okay. Alright. So uh, I would respectfully request a vote by the board to support the Green Energy Initiative and uh, have the, the Board of Selectmen uh, provide a letter to, to DOER on the board support. All right, so you did all the work, well, you and your board. So if you want to make the motion, make it. I'll make the motion. Okay. And I will second, second that motion. All right. Thank all you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good job. I should say, nobody, okay. I should already yeah. present. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. All right. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Chair, um, I take full responsibility. This, the next item on the agenda is yeah. the police policies and procedures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Chief Landry did call me this afternoon and say, is there anything I need to be there for tonight? And I told him no. Um, so that, <laughs> that's, that's why he's can, not can here. I say I about that. <laughs> we can. I've been. We I've still been, got a few more pages to read. Yeah, I can so do the three more that after that. Okay. <laughs> and I, I skimmed through all of them, and uh, offhand I would approve them, but uh, with the proviso that there are a lot of redundancies in the policies, 
and it's a little bit confusing. Uh, you know, I like to see something more direct so that if on a planned basis going forward that we just, you know, go through and upgrade those things to make it simpler. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And take the redundancy out because redundancy is the potential for conflict. You change one in one place and Cool. All right, so you want to put him on the agenda for October 6th? Sure. We just bought two weeks. <laughs> oh, two. Great, right? <laughs> great, yeah. Thanks, Helen. That was good. <laughs> good job, Helen. Thank and it's you. It's a nice meeting. <laughs> All right, any new business, anyone? Uh, final public forum. <clears throat> Final public forum, anyway. Uh, all right, so our next regular meeting is Monday, October 6, 2014, at 7 p.m., right here at the Municipal Center. And no signatures tonight. Motion to adjourn. Oh, we have one signature. One, one signature. Oh, oh, that's, that's right. right. Then we'll look. And we have no executive session. I should have mentioned an exemplar of the letter that I requested is attached to the last page, or next to the last page in that packet you have. The next to last, you said? Next to the last page. And I'll forward that template over to uh, Mr. Himmelberger. And he can make adjustments and... I think we already have one for a little bit. I have one from oh, okay. Dr. Davis. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, it's on the last. Yeah. Oh, okay. The one in front that the guy wants. Yeah, we'll get a second. Yeah, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll just stop by the central office with what Dr. Davis wrote. Uh, just say, you know, we'd like okay. to have it updated with you. I mean, Very good. Okay. Motion. Okay, now you can. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all, folks.